Hello and welcome to Conversations with Elizabeth Johnston. I'm Elizabeth, your host, and I am so excited to have a guest in studio with me today, an amazing man of God named Eric Gilmore. For those of you who don't know him already, Eric is an author, musician, and speaker who travels the world teaching God's Word. He and his wife, Brooke, are the founders of Sonship International, a teaching ministry committed to strengthening the church. Mm. Their hearts are to bring the church into a deeper experience of God's presence in their daily lives. Eric, it is such an honor to have you here. It is an honor to be here. Thank you so much. The impact you have had on me personally and my family um, is just beautiful and profound. Uh, I will never forget my children went to the Jesus Image mm. conference in 2019. And I was back here at home with the younger children and my adult children uh, went and they came home just wrecked mm. for the Lord. And my um, one of my sons, who was, I think, 17 at the time, he did does dishes for me a lot in, mm. in the kitchen. <laughs> at that time he did, when he was 17. He was my, my dishwasher. <laughs> um, and that was his, his chore. And normally he would be listening to like political podcasts and wow. things like that at night while he was watching, um, you know, dishes. And after the Jesus Image Conference, I would go in and find that he was listening to your sermons all the time wow. while he was washing dishes. And he said to me, Mom, <laughs> you have to listen to this man. And I had never heard of you. You have to listen to this. And I was like, okay, I better check this out. And uh, just um, a, such a beautiful anointing and message that you carry. So poetic, <laughs> such a creative um, and I, I love that that combination, but super honored to have you right here uh, on the podcast. That, that blesses me to hear that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're impacting young people across the globe. Well, I would love for you to share with our audience sure. your salvation testimony. Mm -hmm. How did the Lord get a hold of you? Well, my dad was a pastor Okay. all my life. I went to Christian schools and I went to uh, Sunday school and youth programs mm -hmm. and summer camps and all this so I knew a lot about God and religion and the Bible mm -hmm. but I did not know Jesus mm. but in 1995 God poured out his spirit in a town called uh, Brownsville yes in Pensacola Florida and there was such an outbreak of God's tangible presence to use the words of John G Lake the tangibility of God yeah. People were getting saved driving by. People were lining up at 6 a.m. to get into the 7 p.m. services. We were about six hours away from this, but okay. buses were going from our church to there and coming back totally changed. People this was were in being, Florida? Yes, yes. People were getting healed, saved, set free from drugs and all kinds of problems. My dad actually tells my mom, why don't you go up and check it out? Mm -hmm. So my mom took her you know, crazy lady intercessor friends, you know, those, that group yes. of <laughs> women that actually believe God hears them when they Come pray. Come on now. <laughs> yes. They went up and came back completely changed. Mm. Uh, I'll never forget the day my mom came back. Mm. She walked into the kitchen and I was sitting on the counter. My brother was getting something out of the refrigerator and we hadn't seen her since she left. And mm. when she comes back, her face was aglow mm. with the presence of Jesus. Mm. She walked in and my brother looked at her and was so convicted of his sin, he ran behind the kitchen table and said, don't come near me, Mom. Don't come near me. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. like the old school testimonies yes. you hear of the yeah. revivalists who would walk into a room and the room would just like get wrecked. So that's what I saw when she came back and it made me really afraid to go. Okay. I was like, I am, I don't know what happened to her, but she's different. But it was real. It was undeniable. Whew, chill pumps. Yeah. So they persuaded me to go by telling me I could bring my girlfriend, who is now my wife. But, um, oh. so this is 96 and we went there and I got saved. How, now this is, let me explain what happened. Was Steve Hill preaching? Yes. He preached every night for years, but when we pulled up there, I have to, I have to explain this because people don't understand. Okay. There was a line that went from the beginning of the church mm -hmm. and wrapped all around the parking lot. Mm. And there was local businesses had found out what was going on they set up shop all around uh people were sleeping there with coolers and umbrellas book bags all this 
And they were just camped there all day. And they're not there to watch a concert. Mm -mm. They're not there to watch a circus. No. There's no entertainment. Right? They're just hungry for the Lord. Hungry for the Lord. Because his presence was so real Mm -hmm. that four million people came through the doors in four years without one advertisement. There's no Facebook. Right. There's no Instagram. The internet wasn't even off the ground, really. Right. And we have millions coming to experience the tangible presence of God. So Mm -hmm. I walked through the threshold of the door and felt the glory of God. When I say the glory, I mean the, Mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. just convicts you thoroughly. You know that you need God. I Mm -hmm. ran down to the altar, gave my life to the Lord. And that's when everything changed. Wow. And you were what age? I was uh, 15. 15. Yeah. Think about my 15 year old, (laughs) Elijah. Wow, how beautiful. So I was going to ask you next how the Brownsville Revival impacted your life, but yeah. you, you just answered it. That, yeah. I, I don't think I knew that was a part of your salvation testimony. That, that is it. And I got filled with the Spirit. Yes, very there. important. Very important. Actually, my mom, <laughs> she wanted me to get prayed for so bad uh-huh. that she was like, Eric, please, please go get prayed for. But I was seeing what was happening to the people. Oh. That were getting prayed for. They yeah. were falling on the ground and shaking or right. crying and shrieking. And I was like, no, I'm good. I just mm-hmm. gave my life to the Lord. I'm not going to get prayed for, Mom. Mm-hmm. She was like, please, Eric, for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. And so I uh, found this meek and mild, silver-haired old couple over on the side that worked on the prayer team. <laughs> they felt safe, Yeah, huh? safe, yeah. <laughs> and I said, um, I'll let them pray for me. And I'll never forget this. This is very special. I turned to face that silver-haired old man. And he grabbed my shoulders and turned me to face his little wife. And she reached her hand up, shaking like this, Mm -hmm. and uh, put her fingers on my forehead with a little bit of oil on it. Mm -hmm. And she said words that changed my life. Mm -hmm. She said, drink, son, drink. (laughs) And I didn't understand what she meant. I would drink what? How? It didn't make sense. Right. But she kept saying it, drink, son, drink. Mm -hmm. And I figured out soon that she's not going to stop saying this until something happens. (laughs) So I said, in my heart of hearts, Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if there's anything for me, Mm -hmm. then I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's how you drink when Mm -hmm. you just surrender. And the Holy Ghost came upon me. I got blasted by Mm -hmm. the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything about me. I became addicted to the way it feels when I give my attention to Jesus. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, talk about that for a minute. Like, um, so many... Young men are addicted yeah. to a feeling, mm-hmm. the feeling that they have when they yeah. look at pornography, oh, the yeah. feeling that yeah. they get when they are high. Or yeah. um, talk about that that addiction that you <laughs> that you have, yes. because you know we need a lot more men to be addicted to the presence of God. Yeah. Well, to use the words of Robert Murray McShane, he said, "A calm hour with God." is worth a lifetime with any man. Mm. Or the words of Charles Spurgeon, he said, it is worthwhile to have lived, if for nothing else, than to spend a half an hour with Jesus. Mm. (laughs) Or one more that's really special. David Brainerd, Mm -hmm. he said, an hour with God infinitely excels all the pleasures and delights of this lower world. (laughs) See, what the the pleasures of this world are like this world, earthy. Mm -hmm. But the pleasures of Christ are like himself, heavenly. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I found that there isn't a higher experience that the soul and body can experience than being given completely over to the rule of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's in that rule, the submission to his rule, that that kingdom sets up on the inside Mm -hmm. and the shining glory, which you know so well, Mm -hmm. that shining beacon of glory goes out into every corner of your being as Jesus is erected as king. Mm-hmm. Everything depends upon God occupying the chief place in mm-hmm. our attention. And that's where that wonderful experience, blissful, joyful, uh, unspeakable peace. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And you just hope and pray when you're communicating this to others who have not experienced it yet that mm-hmm. you know the Holy Spirit will um, communicate it to them because you know when you're explaining it that they they can't really understand what you're saying if yeah. they haven't experienced it themselves. That's true, very true. <laughs> so you have to trust the Lord to allow <laughs> it to be communicated to them by the Spirit. 
What would you say are some of the biggest misconceptions about revival? Mm. I I think... Because you've been through a yes. major revival. The thing about the Brownsville Revival was the presence. Mm-hmm. It was the reviver in our midst. Mm-hmm. So if I was to define revival, it would be the reviver in our midst. So a lot of times we... it's to So find it wasn't my, Steve's preaching. It wasn't Lyndall Cooley's worship leading. No, I'll actually say something that's kind of sensitive. But when I went to Steve's funeral, we were the same people in the same room singing the same songs. And it wasn't the same. Mm. So this shows me something. Mm. that It couldn't be recreated. Come on. It was just him. Mm. He was the secret. Jesus. Why? Why did God do it? Right. There. <laughs> you then. know, that's the, that's the age old question. One would say it was prayer. Uh-huh. Another would say it was just divine intervention at mm. God's sovereign choice. Some would say, you know, it's because of uh, the history. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I know this, that it was real. If we had those answers, then we wouldn't have, then we wouldn't be hungry. Mm. <laughs> right? Like right. the Lord allows us to not have answers so yeah. that we hunger. And That's good for him. I th- I think what you're saying is so important because then we'll make a formula. Oh yeah. Right. Isn't that how we can turn are? it on? We can yeah. turn it off. Right. right. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> right. That's why we're all hungry. Yeah. Him. Yeah. What does it look like as a believer, as a man in 2021, to rest in the presence of God? Mm. Tozer. There's very little rest oh, in this culture. this is so true. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in the beginning of A.W. Tozer's classic, The Pursuit of God, which is my favorite book, mm. by the way. I read it every year. Wow. He, there's a statement that says, Far too many have accepted turbulence of soul as the norm. Mm. This is... So true. It's all over. This is people's lives. They yeah. just say it's never going to get quiet. So why even look for it? Mm-hmm. But Tozer also said this, and this is something that I really base my life on. He said, Is there anything more important today than getting silent before God. Mm. I mean, think about, there's so many things that we have in our lives. But which one of those things trumps this? Right. Just giving attention Mm -hmm. to Jesus, giving him the kind of attention that he Mm -hmm. deserves. I've often repented to the Lord by saying, Lord, forgive me for giving the attention you deserve Mm -hmm. to other things. Mm -hmm. And so what it looks like to be restful in my opinion, is coming to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that means taking some time to just give attention to him. Not not saying I'm coming to you so that, I'm coming to you for, I'm coming to you and this will. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to you for one reason and one reason only, because you alone are worthy. And I will give you the kind of attention and worship that you deserve. Because what you have done is unmatched in who you are is unmatched and I'm choosing to recognize Mm -hmm. that because that puts you where you belong and we're not recognizing that when we're not carving out time for him and prioritizing time for him are we I agree I think what you just said that's the expression of his lordship to give him time Mm -hmm. it's like if I was gonna if you said follow me out of this room Mm -hmm. if I just walked out of the room and didn't wait for you or give attention to you I'm no longer following you right so I think that's the way I express my mm. my submission to mm-hmm. you. If you're walking out of the room, I wait for you, my attention's on you, and I follow you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then that uh, leads to my next question. Since you do carve out significant time for the Lord, how do you balance that with ministry and family? You're a father of yeah. three. Two. Two. Mm-hmm. Father of two. How do you balance all of that? I can't say that I have... Over the last 23 years or so since I've been saved, been married 18 years, Mm -hmm. I can't say that I've been the best at it. And I I failed in many ways, especially Mm -hmm. early on Mm -hmm. in in my marriage. The first years, I would just go pray and and neglect the the love relationship with my wife. Right. You know, and I, in that, it really hurt us. We started to go like that, just go different ways. And uh, one day I was in there and praying. I was worshiping the Lord, and she was watching a show. Mm -hmm. She's like, do you want to watch a show with me? And I was like, no, I want to pray. So I go in and I pray, and the Lord says to me something. He asked me a question. He said, do I give you attention? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, Lord. 
in my heart, I'm like, yes, Lord, you always give me all your attention. Mm. Then he speaks to me and he says, why don't you be a husband like me? Oh. <laughs> and so wow. I got up and I put aside the what seemed to be more spiritual thing at that moment. Yes. And I went and did what was still very spiritual, very. which was invest in my in my my wife. Mm. And so I'm not the best. I haven't been the best at it. I'm not the best at it, but I do realize that unless it's in an intentional uh, thing, mm-hmm. it can I'll I'll err on the other side of too much time alone with the Lord mm-hmm. and neglect the responsibility of family and the stewardship of family. Mm-hmm. While you know other people would go on the other side, this is my my. Uh, my failures that many times I, I err on too much yeah. time. So I'm still learning this mm-hmm. and my wife could probably answer better than I could on this. Yeah. I should have brought her into yeah. this actually. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's great, but I'm learning this and I, I feel like I'm doing better just giving mm-hmm. individual specific full attention to my wife and kids without having to be talking about the Bible or, yeah. you know, doing something crazy. Just, attention to them i'm learning it i think the the best way to describe the whole thing is just an intentional look at the calendar right and say these things are important and full attention i think is important part of what you said i agree Um, so frequently we're we're multitasking and not giving full attention to anything (laughs) um and so that's that's meaningful to the people in your life i want to jump back real quick before my last question this has been way too way too brief um I want to jump back to some things you were saying about the Brownsville Revival because um, a lot of times when there is a powerful move of God like Brownsville, there are a lot of supernatural things, signs and wonders, manifestations, uh, people claiming signs and wonders and healings and you're not sure um, about it. And there are a lot of people listening to this podcast right now who probably don't have their minds made up on this subject. Um, they, they, they follow me, they followed me for years, but this is something that they've never experienced an actual sign or, or wonder. Sure. And so I want you to talk about that as someone who is, um, very studied and intellectual, um, yet you also have experienced signs and wonders and you would never want something to be out of order in, sure. in a church service, yet you've seen powerful things happen at places like Brownsville. Can you speak to this and um, just explain, you know, what the Word of God says on this? For those that are saying, oh, no, no, that's not in the Word of God. Yeah. So Brian, who I believe you're going to have on, yes, he's the best at answering this question okay. that I know of. But I will say this, that men far greater than me and more than I will ever become have never experienced some of these things. So it's, I don't think it's a prerequisite for spirituality Yes, because I think that's one of the traps is if I don't have gold falling or if I don't feel burning hands, then I must have an inferior experience or an inferior, uh, Christ or, you know, and I think that's important Mm -hmm. to recognize because even reading Andrew Murray's biography, who, if anybody's read anything, by Andrew Murray, they realize he's a, of a different spiritual quality. Mm-hmm. He's just different. But he wanted this to happen. He had seen it in his own meetings, outbreaks of God. Okay. And he wanted it and prayed, said, Lord, give me this, whatever's happening to them, this, these things. And mm-hmm. he never received these kinds of manifestations. Okay. But no one would deny that he uh-huh. had an, not only an incredibly deep relationship with the Lord, but he also had internal experience of God that far exceeds what most people do. Oh, yeah. His book on humility was yes, yes. impactful in my life. He had a subjective experience. It, it was here. He didn't see a lot out here in his yeah. personal life. But in here, he Come had on. the present. This is the most important That's thing. That's all the Lord wants is yes. purity. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. so for me, I, I feel like there's traps there. I have seen many of these things. But I don't. I remember I was on a show. But what about the time. Doubting Thomases? Yeah. I, you know, I like some of these guys because they're just so honest and they're just like, you, you mean know, the what? doubters. Yeah. The doubters they are like, you know, what? I just, I don't, why would God do that? I'm like, you know what? You're using your head. You're <laughs> thinking things through yeah. and you're wondering about it. I think it's, it's, it's okay to be like, Lord, if this is really you, then I want to, I want to mm-hmm. see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't think the Lord is, is nervous 
about people like this. Oh, that's good. You know, I think he's just like, you know, I, I know how to deal with each person according to who they are and what, what they are. So I mm. I have friends Is that the are Lord daughters. specific with us in his encounter with us? Would you say he's specific with us individually given who we are and what we're like? You think he, I, yeah, he I ministers think so. to people in different ways? I would think that whatever you are today... Uh-huh is based upon what he showed you of himself. Mm. So he makes you to be whatever you're to be by how he shows himself to you. Mm. And that showing of himself to you is dependent upon your person, who you are, what you need work done, what you need, Mm -hmm. how you need to see him. He shows himself in the way that he needs to be seen by you to make you what you need to be. Mm. So it's all a revelation of him. Again and again. So I apologize. I'm not very good at answering the signs and wonders. No, questions. no, that's so amazing. He's the voice of many waters. Oh, that's a good, good point. Right. Many waters. <laughs> Whatever kind of water he needs to be. <laughs> it's beautiful. Wow. My last question, Eric, is if you could go back mm. to young Eric Gilmore mm-hmm. and warn him maybe of spiritual landmines that you had no idea were coming and, mm-hmm. and didn't know how to navigate, what would what would you warn Eric about? This is a great question. And the fact that you asked it is funny because I wrote down seven statements. All right, I'll read them to you real quick. But this is what I would say okay. to you know anyone who would ask that specific question. The first thing is that the essential Christian message is not behave, it's behold. Oof. I needed to know this, Ugh. and I didn't. So many pastors' kids, so many people oh. grow up in Christian homes are trapped there. They're stuck there. Yeah, I was stuck there. Mm-hmm. Even after Brownsville, I got into the be, be, behave and forgot the behold. Mm. But there's no way to be, behave so good. without a behold. That's going to be a meme on my page. Mm, That's take good. it. <laughs> Another one is, is, you've heard this before, but snuggle, don't struggle Mm -hmm. i i was killing myself by struggling Mm. and i was neglecting the snuggling yeah but all powers right there and just laying your head upon his chest remember when lazarus is raised from the dead Mm. the next time you see him he's reclining with the lord at the Mm. table it's just evidence of the fact that you believe jesus has raised you up when you lay on him when you you know so snuggling and not struggling is something that would have saved me a lot of time Somebody would have just looked at me and said that. Another yeah. one is, until we realize the presence of God, we've done nothing. Hmm. This means for prayer. This is the reading of the word. This is walking out my my life. Realizing his presence mm-hmm. is where significance is. And until I've realized his presence, I've done nothing. That's good. That's what this thing is all about. He's way. He's truth. He's life. Yes. Until I realize his presence, I have no truth. I have no way. I have no life. Right. Uh, another thing is is... Everything depends upon God occupying the chief place in our attention. Mm-hmm. I think this would save so many people in prayer from having unfruitful prayer times. A lot of times we go into the closet and leave the same way we came in because we did everything but give him the place he deserves. Mm. That's a, another one. And then another one is when the, uh, this is one of my favorites, when the eyes of the soul looking out meet the eyes of God looking in, mm-hmm. heaven has begun upon the earth. Mm. <laughs> and another one would be, uh, oh, this is this will be the last one I say. God gives Himself freely to everybody. He's like light, and light comes into a room to the degree it's not obstructed. He has lavished Himself on mankind, which means we have as much of God as we've wanted, mm. and as much as you want of God, He'll give Whew. to you. It never ends. It never ends, and that itself fuels me and makes me spiritually salivate yes. for more of God because right. he's right there. Mm. <laughs> so beautiful. The hunger that uh, when you speak, the hunger that it produces mm. um, is is heavenly. It's from the Lord. Mm. And um, you word things in a way that very few people um, can. And I pray that everyone listening is as deeply impacted as I have been <laughs> by listening to your um, your messages, your YouTube videos. Could you please tell the audience how to connect with you on your different platforms? So the main one, as you said, is YouTube. Yes, you yeah. have over 100,000 subscribers there, is that right? Yes, right now we do, yeah. 
Eric Gilmore, just my name, uh, will be the first one that comes up. Yes. Um, but we also have a Patreon. Yeah. Which has been great for us. Good. We have a mentor program okay. inside Patreon. Yeah. Which has been great. It's called Adoration Mentoring International. Okay. And so people become a Patreon and enter into like a interactive relationship with us that mentors them through life. And, so valuable. Yeah. So th- those are really the, the main things. We do have Instagram and, yeah. and uh, TikTok and all these things. We'll okay. put little snippets to spiritually surge people. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Yes, I hope that everyone avails themselves of connecting um, with our guest, Eric, who um, is just an amazing man of God. And make sure you connect with him, follow him, make sure you share this podcast episode. We love you. We hope you're inspired to uh, just lean in in a love relationship with Jesus Christ, our bridegroom. God bless you.